uh, apostles except Paul. Galatians chapter 2. Then 14 years later, I went back to Jerusalem again. This time with Barnabas and Titus came along too. I went there because God revealed to me that I should go. While I was there, I met privately with those considered to be leaders of the church and shared with them the message I had been preaching to the Gentiles. I wanted to make sure that we are in agreement for fear that all my efforts had been wasted and I was running the race for nothing. And there supported me and did not even demand that my companion Titus be circumcised, though he was a Gentile. Even that question came up only because of some so-called believers there, false ones really, who were secretly brought in. They sneak in to spy on us and take away the freedom we have in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. They wanted to enslave us and force us to follow their Jewish regulation, but we refused to give in to them for a single moment. We wanted to preserve the truth of the gospel message for you, and the leaders of the church had, had nothing to add to what I was preaching. By the way, their reputation as great leaders made no difference to me. For God has no favors. Instead, they saw that God had given me the responsibility of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles, just as he had given Peter the responsibility of preaching to the Jews. For the same God who worked through Peter as the apostle to the Jews also worked through me as the apostle to the Gentiles. In fact, James, Peter, and John who were known as pillars of the church, recognized the gift God had given me, and they accepted Barnabas and me as their co-workers. They encouraged us to keep preaching to the Gentiles while they continued their work with the Jews. Only, their only suggestion was that we keep on helping the poor, which I have always been eager to do. Paul confronts Peter, but when Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him to his face, for what he did was very wrong. When he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile believers who were not circumcised, but afterwards when some friends of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. He was afraid of criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Jewish believers followed Peter's, hypocr Peter's hypocrisy and even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. When I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel message, I said to Peter in front of all the others, Since you, a Jew by birth, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile, why are you now trying to make these Gentiles follow the Jewish traditions. You and I are Jews by birth, not sinners like the Gentiles. Yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Christ Jesus, not by obeying the law, but, uh, sorry, and we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law, for no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law. But suppose we seek to be made right with God through faith in Christ, and then we are found guilty because we have abandoned the law. Would that mean Christ has led us into sin? Absolutely not. Rather, I am a sinner. If I rebuild the old system of law, I already tore down. For I, for when I, for when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements, so that 
I might live for God. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in the earth. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless, for if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. It's the word of God.